from the opera Turn Dot. I will conquer, I will conquer. Welcome to Healthy Vision, the talk radio show that helps you conquer your vision loss. Dr. Edward Condrett is a board-certified ophthalmologist and homeopathic doctor, author of seven best-selling books. Healthy Vision is dedicated to bring you the latest information for a lifetime of healthy sight and to help you conquer your eye problems. And now your host, Dr. Edward Condrett. Uh, good morning, everyone. If you can hear me, uh, give me a thumbs up. Can you hear me? All right, good, good. Um, I guess the purpose of this, uh, I recently uh, gave a presentation to Clear Vision, and we've got a lot of questions and inquiries. So I thought I'd have this session uh, ask Dr. Conrad a question. So I'm happy that all of you are here. And uh, what we can do is there's a couple ways you can ask me a question. If you have your video camera on, you can just raise your hand so I see you and then I'll call on you. Right now, everybody's muted. So please uh, keep yourself muted unless you're talking, okay? Because otherwise there'll be a lot of background noise and it'll be hard for people to hear. So one way is to raise your hand, ask a question. The other way is to uh, type a question in the chat. Uh, let's see, I believe that the chat is on. Let me see. Yeah. The chat is on and I can see that. So that's a way to do it. Okay. Um, so let's begin. Um, okay. Gorok, uh, Gormak, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Yeah, uh, good morning. I'm from London, so good afternoon on my side. Um, uh, where's uh, Dr. Kondra? Um, it's just a personal question. Um, been looking over your recent emails. Uh, I know you've got a home clinic program. Um, just one close question, simple yes and no, and I've got one open question. Uh, the first question, will you ever reopen the in-clinic program again? The ones you used to do before COVID? Um, you know what? Um, I had thought about that, but our results are just so good with the um, the online program, the home program. And uh, we're really trying to keep the cost on for patients who are interested in my program. And the online program just worked out so well. Uh, you know, we do have meetings on Zoom. I do give you personal attention. I review your medical records, your eye records. And I do have a one-on-one -on -one with you uh, to begin the program. Uh, so it, it just worked out really well. And I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do a screen share uh, because I wanna share with all of you some important information that I think will be valuable to help you understand more about my program. So let me go to um, screen share. So I hope all of you can see the screen share. All right, can you see my uh, website here? Yeah. You go to healingtheeye.com and uh, this icon right here is really valuable, it's new to this site. This will take you to a lot of information that, um, you know, dealing with my treatments, the microcurrent, homeopathy, light therapy, et cetera. So you click on that icon and there's a nice uh, introductory note by me. Um, step one, I have three steps to begin to restore your vision. One is to become familiar with my approach. That would be the first thing to do. Sure. And that would be either to get my best-selling book and glance at that. Many of you have poor vision and you're not able to read. So I do have a 10 essentials webinar, but essentially those of you that attended the clear vision, I talked about the 10 essentials. Step two is to find out more about your condition. Uh, do you have cataracts, glaucoma, 
macular degeneration, dry eyes, floaters, macular pucker. These are webinars that I gave on those particular topics. If your eye disease is in here, you may want to go to my podcast. I had a radio show, Healthy Vision Talk Radio, believe it or not, for 22 years. Every Sunday for 22 years, I had a radio show. Wow. We cover just about every topic. Um, so you can go right there and search for a topic. Then the next step is to get a free eye record review. You send me a copy of your eye records. I personally will review them. I'm not going to charge you for that, just to see if you are a good candidate for my program. And if you're not a good candidate for my program, I'll still make some suggestions or recommendations that can help you. And then here's a link to find out more about my program. Then you may want to be interested in common therapies that I use in my practice. Uh, this is one on microcurrent, one on homeopathy, ozone. I'm really big with ozone therapies. I have three uh, videos on that. Light therapy and detox. So that's probably a good way to kind of find out more about what, what I do. Oh, sure. uh, and unfortunately, right now, I don't have any plans to have uh, an in-office program, um, yeah. mainly because the results are just so good with the home program. And believe it or not, I think it may be a little bit more personable because when you join my group, we meet uh, twice a month on a Zoom call uh, to talk about issues and problems. And then my office manager, Chris, she meets with everybody on the program uh, once a week. So we do have a lot of hand hand holding. And uh, I do believe that, you know, to be successful, we want to make sure that we do stay in touch with you. It's not like you start the program and, you know, give me a call in a year and I'll see how you're doing. We want to make sure that the therapies that we begin uh, are making a difference in, in your site. Which, um... As funny you mentioned that last bit. Um, thanks for the information. Um, we actually had a consultation, um, me and yourself, uh, about three years ago. So basically, my issue is that I had the tuberculosis in my eye. Uh, it was picked up late here in England, and it left some retinal scarring. Now, I've seen one testimonial of yours, your patient, from many years ago. I think she had a histoplasmosis scar. Right, uh, yeah. Which in the space of three days, she comments that you're in clinic program basically got rid of it the scar was right in the macula from what she described so i know the, the situation i've got i've got a scar just above my fovea in my right eye and a few peripheral scars in my left eye um and when we had a discussion um i think you said there's a good chance we can probably get rid of it in some form of i don't know if it was a in clinic or not but obviously it's been a few years my TB only got diagnosed about a year and a half ago after a series of misdiagnoses. It's been cured, which is the good news. The infection's gone. Um, but obviously, for me now, I'm like thinking, how do we perhaps maybe get significantly reduce the scarring or maybe, you know, even potentially get rid of it. Um, but I just wanted to sort of your advice. Is this something I could probably do from home? Because I've got a microcurrent machine from about five years ago. Um, it helped a little bit, uh, but not a lot at the time. Um, the programming for it is program one. It says macular degeneration, um, which was totally used by yourself when you programmed it. Um, at this moment, I actually do have a ozone machine for rectal use. Um, I do have a zinc supplement and even a stem cell oral supplement. So it's like it triggers stem cells from your um, bone marrow. But I'm just I'm just thinking, what do you think is the best advice in terms of getting some form of result from it, maybe? Well, the best thing to do is I think I need to have an update review of your records to see what's going on. It's been three years. Yeah. So, um, you know, send the records. There'll be no charge for that. I'll take a look at the re your records and see if we have to update anything. But over the past three years, we've had a lot of changes in therapies. Uh, you know, I like to think that I'm constantly improving the program. I think we are. So what yeah. we did three years ago is different than what we're doing now. Um, so that'll be the first step, you know, send a copy of the records to the office and uh, we'll get back to you 
on uh, reviewing things. How does that sound? That sounds perfect. I will definitely send um, my new up update scans on my retina as well. And maybe I think that's probably the best approach. Thank you. Okay, good. Much appreciated. Okay, other questions. All right. Um, I don't see your name there. JPA. Hi. You can have to unmute yourself. Yeah, there's a uh, click your microphone. Ask, I'm asking you to unmute. There, can you hear me All now? Right. Yeah, I hear I you now. You. you got a busy background there. What, what business are you in? I see a lot of. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a professional musician. Ah, uh huh. And uh, anyway, Dr. Conrad, my question is. Uh, what are the potential uh, complications of laser eye surgery for the high interocular pressure? Um, well, categorically speaking, I'm against uh, any type of surgical procedure. But, you know, glaucoma is a serious disease. It's one of the few eye diseases that can lead to total blindness. I'm talking about midnight in a coal mine. So uh, my approach is, well, we not only look at the pressure, but we want to look at the health of the optic nerve. There's two factors going on. One, the pressure, one, the health of the optic nerve. And I would encourage you to watch my uh, uh, webinar on the big lie about glaucoma. I saw that. Yes, it was excellent. Yeah. I plan on yeah. doing the treatment, the program for the uh, lost vision restoration. Mm -hmm. uh, I plan to be doing that instead of the laser eye surgery. I, now, I think that's... the question I have is how high is your pressure? Uh, with the eye drops, it's been um, uh, between 14 and 16. Okay, so that's, and... that's considered normal. Now, if your pressure was maybe 30, I'd say you better get the laser done. But, you know, in the mid-teens, that's normal. We got to do things to begin to improve the health of the optic nerve. Yes, I that's agree. what we need to do. Now, all the doctors talk about a target pressure. Uh, by a target pressure, a good eye doctor will follow your visual fields and other measurements over time. And if you are losing vision or visual field, they may feel, well, we got to lower the pressure. My approach is the pressure is important, but I think more importantly, we got to do things to help your um function of your optic nerve, improve the blood flow, of course, diet, nutrition, exercise, stress reduction is really big. Um, studies have shown that, you know, stress will definitely decrease the blood flow to the optic nerve and, you know, cause problems. So we got to talk about all these things. That's why I like homeopathy. Homeopathy treats the underlying cause, whether it's emotional stress or whatever. And then microcurrent helps improve the blood flow. So all these things, I think, can be a, a benefit. Uh, what is the, uh, the general time frame to see any results from the microcurrent therapy? Well, we always like to see um, an immediate improvement. Everyone's happy. And some people do. A matter of a week or so, they see an improvement. Other people will take a longer period of time. But my goal is that I want to see some shift in your body. You know, maybe you're feeling better, calmer, uh, more optimistic. Uh, a lot of times we need to see the mental, emotional change first and the physical. So um, if, if you don't have any change, let's say in two to four weeks, then we have to kind of review things and maybe make some changes. So I usually do that with people in the program. We want to see some type of shift. If not, then we got to make some changes. Okay. Uh, so where, read, where, uh, where, are you, where are you located? I'm in uh, Sun City, Arizona. I used to listen to you on uh, KFNX all the time. <laughs> okay. But you just I, speak, huh? <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I miss Arizona. I have a lot of fun memories. Uh, I, I love the desert. Yeah. Um, I read one one uh, article which said that 
pine bark, French pine bark, uh, along with the glaucoma eye drops can have a reduction in eye pressure. Are you familiar with that or if you yeah. heard? I mean, there's a lot of um, products out there that can help reduce the eye pressure, but it's usually hit or miss. And usually it doesn't have any long-term effect. So, okay. uh, you know, like ginkgo biloba, coleus for scoli, pine bark, all these things. Uh, but I have found that when somebody is taking eye drops, usually the supplements have very little effect because the eye drops are so powerful for lowering the pressure. We got to focus more on um, uh, improving the function of your optic nerve. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's the main approach. Improve the function of your optic nerve. Okay. I have one final question. I have recently, I've been using the eye drops, the dorzolamide and the brimidine, and I've been getting an irritation and itching and burning around my eyes and like almost like a rash on my eyelids. Is there any kind of salve or... And, and oh, uh, ozone eye drops. Ozone eye drops? Yeah, go uh, go to my healingtheeye.com and I have a YouTube video on how to make, you have to make your own ozone eye drops. You can't buy them. You can buy a, like a little aquarium bubbler that bubbles ozone. You bubble it in saline, you put it on the eye and it can be uh, very, it can be very dramatic in terms of eliminating itching, burning and, you know, the redness. I find that very helpful, especially it works for a lot of glaucoma patients because you're not alone. Those eye drops are very, very toxic and they cause a lot of problems. Okay, I, I know this has changed. They, they switched me to a different company, the same eye drops for the different company. The Bosch and Lom, uh, I had some irritation and so they switched me back to the uh, Sandoz brand. Mm -hmm. That seems to be doing a little better, but. I'm hoping mm -hmm. that's all it was, was just a switch in the company name of the eye drops, mm -hmm. the manufacturer. Okay. Well, I'll look forward to working with you. Yes. Thank you so much for, for all you do, your uh, tremendous ministry to everyone in the world. You know, you've uh, certainly had a tremendous impact on the lives of uh, many, many people. And so God bless oh, you, well, thank Dr. Condra. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right, other questions. Okay, Marie, how are you? You have to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yep, I hear you now. Oh, I just have a quick question on the microcurrent. Um, I asked you last week about using the tabs for my ears, you mentioned the tabs now. Do I have to get special leads for the microcurrent machine? Okay, for those of you that are new, uh, Marie is an existing patient of mine, and we're always figuring out ways to improve the microcurrent. And we're, uh, because of our hearing problem, microcurrent can help with hearing, we have her put the pads on her ears. You do have to get special leads. There's a special lead. Okay. That you so you know, those EKG pads that you see, they're sticky pads. You would put one on each ear. So, but there are two on each on the pads. The pads have right. two on one. So I would only use one. On oh, no, one. no. Uh, Ning Wu, the, um, uh, the developer of the microcurrent, now has a method where all you need is one pad. You can talk to Chris about that. And okay. uh, I have a uh, video on using the pads. I saw that the other day, and that's when I realized yeah. I needed to get the lead. Yeah, there's a little clip. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's the uh, benefit now of YouTube, and we try to have educational videos on, er, anytime you have a question, I have a YouTube video on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Alan, how are you? Okay, if that was to me, I'll respond. Yes, uh, uh, I'm not so familiar with your website as I ought to be, I guess. How do we get to the YouTube clips, particularly on things like glove placement? For uh, you would, um, okay, there's, a, there's another site 
let me oh did you get your new homeopathic remedy yes i did and I, i'm about five days into it okay well give it a couple more and uh we're gonna okay i'm gonna take you to another site i'm ready to write this down i'm doing a screen share oh here let me do this again Okay, so you're going to go to type in chondrot youtube.com. Chondrot youtube.com. I got it. And I got, oh my goodness, there's so many videos here, but you want to go to playlist. Okay. And um, you want to go to home program. Oh, here we are. Home program. And click on a home program. Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Edward Kondrat. And these are the key videos. Intro to microcurrent, review of the Inspirstar machine, improving your results with microcurrent, six-hour urine test, taking your homeopathic remedy, syntonic light, microcurrent glove placement, and using electrodes and pads with your Inspirstar machine. So when you join the program, I advise um, uh, all of the new newbies in the program to listen to all these in fact when i used to have the week program you know where patients would come to my office for a week every day i would give a lecture like this so essentially what i did is i recorded all these lectures so it's like you're in the week program and this is the one on using um the electrodes and pads with your microcurrent machine yeah well, well thank you i'll follow up on that uh but uh, the question, my basic question is, should the palm or the fingers, I have a glove type of uh, uh, electrode, what should be over, what should be directly over the affected eye? I didn't understand your question. Okay, I've got a glove uh, mm -hmm. and uh, should, what part of that glove should be most directly over the affected eye? Well, the, the, it's not the glove so much, it's the washcloth. When we, when we have patients do the eye treatment, we wrap a silver conductive, silver impregnated glove, yeah. which has high conductivity. We wrap it in a wet washcloth yeah, and I do place that. it over the eye. So it yeah. really doesn't matter what part. The current is going through the entire area of the surface of the glove. Okay, great. So it doesn't mean like you need the front end of the glove, the middle, as long as it's centered over your eyes. Okay. Thank you for all that. Yeah, and Alan's, uh, he's he's a, are currently a member in our the, program. Uh, and also, could you tell me, I'll, I'll quit on this one, uh, what's the link to the weekly sessions with Chris? Uh, usually the sessions start at two o'clock Eastern time. And they'll last as long as it takes for her to answer all the questions. And that's every week. But is that a separate link? I mean... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's a separate link. And I can send that to you. E email info at Healing the Eye, and I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you. But uh, there's two links that you can't lose. One is for my meetings twice a month which you're always on those meetings. And uh, the other one is Chris, that's every week. Okay, good, so um, other questions. All right, we got, uh, oh, JP, uh, you got on mute. Okay. okay. Um I had a question. Um, 
I've, uh, there was a book out about dirty electricity. Uh, could that be a factor in uh, vision loss and optic nerve damage? Uh, definitely. A great book. I think it's by Samuel Millman. That's the one. In fact, I interviewed him on my radio show. You can go back to uh, some of the old recordings, uh, but it's a great book. And now there's problems with the... Um, Oh, what do you call it now? Uh, the smart meters in your yes, home. exactly. Yeah, and I had a patient that uh, losing she was losing her vision, and it was we discovered that the smart meter was like right by her bed, by her head, like right on the other side of the wall with a smart meter, and it was a you know frequency coming out. Uh, and it, very, very destructive, very, very destructive. I think dirty electricity is a big, big problem. You know, if you could actually see the dirty electricity, it would be like you're walking around in muddy water or soup. I can remember uh, when I was doing research with microcurrent, Ning Wu, the engineer who was developing the microcurrent machine, he had hooked up um, a um, oscilloscope to my chest. And then he was running different currents into my body and we were measuring the current reaction to my body. So he disconnected the microcurrent machine and on the oscilloscope, there was a current. And I said to Ning, oh, uh, is that my heart rate? He says, no, you're picking up the uh, magnetic energy of the electricity in this room. Because when electricity flows through a current, there's a magnetic wave that's formed. So we're being surrounded by this dirty electricity, which I think some people are very sensitive to, and that can be a cause of uh, you know eye damage. Uh, I've I've heard that the, these stetserizers, these plug-ins to the electrical outlet, can reduce the dirty electricity, and uh, I think there is an EMF reader that you can purchase that will measure the amount of the uh, stray electricity, the mm -hmm. dirty electricity. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a little device here that measures all the frequencies from zero to, I don't know, five gigahertz. And I get a recording of that. And it's amazing what you can, what you can pick up. Um, now, uh, one thing that I think is very beneficial, uh, Stephen Sinatra, um, he wrote a great book called Earthing. And one way to counteract that is by grind, grounding our body to the earth. And most of us live our life without grounding our body. We have rubber soled shoes, you know, and we're not touching the earth. So uh, walk around with your uh, bare feet touching the earth. And you want to read a, a good book, read the book called Earthing by Stephen Sinatra. Uh, he felt that this was the greatest discovery in his medical career. And uh, I've had story after story of people reversing chronic problems just by grounding their body into the earth. That's one of the reasons why when you're on the beach and you're in the salt water, essentially your bo body is grounded to the earth. There's something called the Schumann frequency, which is seven point something hertz that our body needs that frequency. So you might wanna check into that in terms of the gating. Okay. We have a chat question here. I just had my cataract surgery last year, used all the drops that were prescribed, but until now I still have irritation and some pain around the eye, what should I do? I can't afford to go to your program. Is there something you can recommend? Well, the number one is I, I will not give any advice unless I see your eye records. So the first step is get a copy of your eye records and send it to me and I'd be happy to review them uh, and give you some advice. Uh, how does that sound? That was, uh, I, don't, I don't see the name here, but hopefully will be able to help you uh, determine what's going on.
because I, I need to know, was there a complication during the surgery? Is the lens implant dislocated? Uh, you know, what's, you have underlying problems, you have glaucoma. So that'd be unfair for me to give you uh, some advice at this point. So send me the records and we'll take care of it. The one thing you might want to do is I love the ozone eye drops. A lot of times the ozone eye drops, I should talk a little bit about ozone. Ozone is a highly reactive form of oxygen and it is shown to um, reduce inflammation, help stimulate healing as a disinfectant effect. You probably heard over and over again that you want to keep your body in an alkaline state. When you're in an alkaline state, you're healthy. So when you are uh, toxic or have disease, you're acidic. So the ozone can help. Hey, Sandra. <laughs> Good to see you. Can you unmute? Hi, I'm sorry. I'm on the Good road, but I, I still you. want to join. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy to see you. We have yeah. uh, we also have a uh, prayer meeting once a month. I do believe in the power of prayer. Yes. And it's a great meeting. We get together every month and we um, uh, petition the Lord. And Sandra is always part of the prayer meeting group. So it's good to yes. see you. Yes. Thank you. Good to see you and everyone. And else. I do think that there's a, a need for spirituality in medicine. Yes. Uh, I, just fin I just finished a mission in Angola <laughs> and I stayed with the minister. Uh, it's run by the Methodist Church, and I stayed at the minister's home. And this he's the most amazing guy in the world. Wow. On Sunday, he's the preacher. But during <laughs> the week, he's the medical doctor. He works like 15 hours a day taking wow. care of the sick. <laughs> and wow. he has a prayer room, and then on Sunday, he's the preacher. <laughs> wow. Okay, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi. So the ozone drops you just mentioned, is that something that's on your website? Yeah, go to uh, that. Are you new to my website and click that? Okay, great. Thank you. And it'll take you right there. And also, uh, we're having a vision event right now. Every year I have a vision event where I invite many of you are probably already participating, but you can also sign up. Uh, we had a, um, my good friend who practices in Rome, Italy, has developed some new innovative treatment using prostaglandin to treat um, retinal problems in glaucoma. He feels that, you know, glaucoma is a circulatory problem. And he prescribes a prostaglandin cream that you put on your skin. And he's had some good success in improving the vision with glaucoma. So, uh, he gave a one-hour lecture on that. Uh, Dr. Wallace talked about light therapy. And right after this, at noon uh, Eastern time, um, uh, Dr. Glenn Strauss is going to be talking. Uh, and I'll be talking about homeopathy. So but it's all recorded. So if you sign up late, you'll still get all the recordings. Cool. The vision event is... Um, uh, four consecutive Saturdays. We meet for two hours every Saturday. Yes, I just found out about you when I when you were on with Trisha on Wednesday. So I haven't haven't looked around your site much. I did download the book and briefly looked at that, but I'm very interested. So thank oh, you. You'll, um, there's so much information on my website. Like I said, I had a radio show for 22 years every Sunday, so a lot of that is recorded. Um, cool. You can get lost in my website. <laughs> <laughs> I could yeah. see that just from this small amount you showed. It'd be easy to get lost. <laughs> and you forget, you're going to forget why you're there. Be in a <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> Go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Have a safety line, okay, so you can get out. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay, other questions? We've got a nice group here. So you can raise your hand or uh, type a note in chat. Those of you that are online, uh, 
be nice to see a face if you could put your camera on. But if you want to be incognito, that's all right. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. It's IPA. What's your first name? Uh, Dennis. Dennis. Okay. Yes. Uh, I have a friend who got the COVID-19 vaccination and almost immediately after that vaccination, she lost vision in one of her eyes. Um, and I know there's been some, uh, a lot of instances of uh, myocarditis from uh, and blood clots from the COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, I was curious if you had heard of any other people who may have lost vision in- Oh yeah, yeah def it's definitely causing circulatory problems. You know, strokes, uh, heart attacks, uh, strokes to the eye. And once again, I'd be happy to take a look at her record to find out exactly the cause of the loss of vision. Uh, because it could be um, uh, maybe not a, a vascular blockage. It could just be an inflammation of the retina. It could be any number of things. So I'd uh, be happy to take a look at the records. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. All right, uh, Judy, hi. I think, uh, can we hear you? Greeter, Greeter, Judy, is that you? The lady with the long blonde hair. Um, I'm Miss Lane, hi. <laughs> uh, I was found out about a protocol that an integrative clinic in Washington, D.C. is using for purging the heavy metals and what they use cholera and then cilantro right after because the uh -huh. cilantro lines. have you heard of that and is it effective oh i love uh, cilantro cilantro is a very very powerful uh detoxifier and cilantro it, it passes the blood brain barrier so it goes into your eye and your brain and uh, there was a study done, you know, the Vietnamese love cilantro. If you get a Vietnamese sandwich and you don't have lettuce on it, you have cilantro. The Vietnamese soup have tons of cilantro. So studies have shown that the Vietnamese have low levels of toxicity because of all the cilantro. So I'm really big with cilantro. But see, it all depends on um, the type of heavy metal you have and, and how extensive it is. I, I do believe that the best way to detoxify is with EDTA chelation. It binds the lead, and uh, you know that it's a it's a big contributing factor to uh, you know eye problems and our health. All the lead toxicity. Uh, you know, I grew up at a time when it was leaded gasoline, leaded paint, leaded lead pencils, and uh, you know it's in the soil, it's in the the atmosphere, and we're just constantly being exposed to it. And I think so all of what us. Is that, oh, I'm sorry. What's the best oral ET, EDTA that, that you would recommend for an oral solution? Uh, I like a product. This is one that I take. It's an um, EDTA and um, garlic. Um, let me see if I have it here. Let me pull it up. It's called Enhanced Garlic EDTA. And you can buy it online. It's fairly inexpensive. I like it because it has EDTA, garlic, parsley, and a couple other ingredients. I take that. Right. Also, see, I like, I like to empower patients. I like you to be doing therapies on your own, not depending on a doctor. I like the uh, EDTA suppositories company called Detoximin. It's an EDTA suppository. And you insert it uh, rectally and it administers a large amount of EDTA to detoxify your body. Great, thank you so much. Oh, and cilantro grows like a weed. 
What was that company name you just mentioned for the suppository? Uh, Detoximin. Thank you. I'll put that in the chat. D detox, like detox, A M I N. Okay. Now you may need a doctor's prescription for it. I'm not sure. So give give our office a call. Um, the one one policy we have in the office is we always try to sell all our items less than you can get online, and patients always kind of thank me for that. So we always try to keep it the price really low. Uh, Marie, you have to unmute. Um, can you mention to the people that they don't have to do it at night? They can do it in the daytime, like you mentioned? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you can do it. I recommend you do the suppository after you have your bowel movement. Like for me, I have my bowel movement early in the morning. Then I do the suppository. I, I think some companies recommend you do it at night when you go to bed. I don't recommend that because sometimes it stimulates your bowel movement and you have to get up in the middle of the night to have a bowel movement. Or, or that, or you defecate yourself in your sleep, which is embarrassing. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want to do that. So I put the name in the chat. Uh, All right, another question. Dennis. Dennis, yes. Um, I read a couple of studies where leech therapy uh, helped reduce interocular pressure uh, from glaucoma, and it also increases the blood flow for the cardiovascular. Uh, and I've had four treatments for glaucoma with the leech therapy. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's had any permanent reduction, but um, anyway, it's an old therapy that's been used for thousands of years, leech therapy, and it's just now coming back into uh, you know recognition and uh, even the Food and Drug Administration has now classified leeches as a medical device. Yeah, send me some information on that because I'm not familiar with that. Okay, yes. I, I think I sent a, a printout a while back, but it never, it didn't go to the correct address or something to that effect. But anyway, there's been a couple of, of studies where one person had two treatments where they put the leeches uh, above the eye, uh, eyebrows uh, in my case, they've had between uh, six and eight, and uh, the leeches secrete a certain enzyme, um, which increases the blood flow. And uh, when they suck out the blood, uh, it's basically 30% blood and 70% toxins. And there have been like heavy metals that have come out in the bandages where it's just like this dark glue. Yeah, well, I think I think that that uh, may have like a, a acupuncture meridian effect, you know, because acupuncture does work to lower the eye pressure and they put points all around the eye. So, uh, you know, the acupuncture sometimes uses electrical stimulation or heat, the moxie. Yes. So it could be just the effect of stimulating the acupuncture meridian. Yes, I had read that also about acupuncture. Uh, puncture being helpful for glaucoma, reducing the pressure. But I think that uh, glaucoma is a disease of the autonomic nervous system. So uh, meditation, uh, ways of relaxation, studies have shown that, you know, meditation, relaxation, positive affirmations can help quieting the autonomic nervous system. Let's see here. All right. Um, other questions here. You can either type it in the chat or up. Uh, oh, I'm going to go back to um, my, uh, let's see. I'm going to go back to my home page here. One second here. And I got to show you something I forgot. So healing the eye, www dot healing the eye. I forgot there's a couple other things here. A lot of you may be interested what uh, 
what evidence is there that these therapies work? These are peer-reviewed studies published by myself. Oh, that link doesn't work. Here, scientific studies. I'm a co-author of a major book on vision rehabilitation. You can read the chapter here. Uh, here's an article that was published in um, Alternative Therapies and Health Peer Review. So there's a bunch of articles here uh, that you can you can read. And let me see here. And this is um, I'm the medical director of Site.org. This is an organization I work with on all my missions. It is a nonprofit, so those of you that want to help uh, the mission cause, you can go there, and we appreciate your donation. Uh, many of you already downloaded my book, and here's a link to the vision event right here. Click this. Even though uh, we're two, two Saturdays into it, you'll get immediately get a recording of all the um, existing um, sessions that have already gone by. But I would encourage you to attend the live session because you can ask questions. Okay. All right. Oh, good question here. What about... PEMF versus microcurrent. PEMF is pulse electromagnetic field. They're two different therapies. Microcurrent is the direct application of a low current into your body. When a current flows through a wire, a pulse field is generated. And I have experimented with the pulse electromagnetic field on the eye. I don't think it is as beneficial as the microcurrent. And some of the pulse electromagnetic field devices have too much energy. They're too strong. And I've seen patients actually have a temporary reduction in their vision or an elevation of their intraocular pressure. So I don't recommend the PEMF directly on the eye. I do think it has benefit uh, on a body treatment. There's companies that have mats that you can lie on and you know, they treat the whole body. It can have benefit there, but I don't like it on the eye, mainly because of the intensity. When you're treating the eye, we use a very, very low current. Um, we use uh, 20 microamps. Uh, a microamp is a millionth of an amp. A uh, very, very low current. So a lot of the commercial, I mean, you can buy a microcurrent machine on eBay for $70, but it has milliamps you know, a thousand of a microamps. And there was a study done uh, that was published looking at current versus regeneration. And once you get above 500 microamps, there seems to be a decrease in cellular activity. So the stronger machines are good for block, like you have nerve pain or back pain, and you want to take care of that. The stronger current is good for that. But in terms of regeneration, you want a very, very low current. And that's why, that's what our machine does. And it's interesting, um, the, um, the, low, the low current, um, uh, we have a, a specific frequency. We try to match the frequency of your body tissue so there's more of a harmonization. You know, every tissue in the body has a certain frequency based on the molecular structure, the hydration, tissue density. And we have found that when you match the right frequency, uh, it will uh, have a, a greater effect in terms of uh, healing. And there's been many, many studies done to show that microcurrent improves blood flow, uh, helps uh, the circulation, uh, oxygenation, and we have frequencies now to help stimulate stem cells. I'm working with a company called um, iCell. E-Y-E-C-E-L-L, -L. they're out of California. They're hoping to bring the microcurrent technology to the market. They're trying to get FDA approval. And then they've identified actual frequencies that stimulate stem cells. Yes, Dennis, you have a lot of questions. 
Yes. Um, are you familiar with Rife therapy? Yeah. And oh, yeah. There are some uh, videos on YouTube, uh, Rife therapy for glaucoma and Rife therapy for um, optic nerve. Well, here's the thing. They're not Rife therapies. When Rife was alive, his device was a cathode tube that generated a frequency. And Rife actually stated if the device touches your body, it's not a rife therapy. So people are taking rife frequencies and putting them in a uh, frequency generator. You can buy a frequency generator at Radio Shack for, you know, well, Radio Shack no longer exists, but for a couple hundred dollars, you can buy a frequency generator and put rife frequencies in. But I don't think they work according to rife. And at the time when Reif was doing his work, we didn't have the electro uh, magnetic pollution, dirty electricity. We didn't have Wi-Fi's, we didn't have cell phones. So his was the only frequency. You could be in a room and you received it. So um, the, the Reif treatments no longer exist, but they're using Reif frequencies. Now, one thing about the proper uh, generator, you know, you're putting electrons in your body. And as I mentioned, you want an alkaline state. So anything, you know, the best way to put electrons into your eye, Dr. Bates talked about this in the early 1920s. Just get your hands, put them over your eyes because your body has a curly in field and you're producing electrons. So I tell people, that this is a poor man's microcurrent. Do what Bates did. <laughs> Put your hands over your eyes. And there's some people um, that feel that, uh, you know, it can help with glaucoma and lower your pressure. But there's two things that take place. One, the, the electromagnetic field is being directed to your body. And it's a type of meditation. You want to relax your body, deep breathing, that type of thing. A question here on the detoxamine, should we use 500, 750 or a thousand? I was all, always start out low, the 500. See if your body can tolerate it. Mm -hmm. But I think we start most people on the 750. Marie, you have a question? I have a question. Do you recommend certain kinds of glasses or coatings for glasses when we're using iPads and the computers? Um, I do have a a, a, a a webinar on light. You know, there's good and bad light. Our body needs blue light during the day. Remember, God made the sky blue and the ocean blue. We need blue light during the day. Uh, blue light at night can be very, very harmful. We need a red spectrum at night. Either that or no light at all. Years ago, when you had the dark rooms, uh, you developed photographic paper, you had a red light bulb. It had no effect, photochemical effect on the paper. So you want red light at night. That's why I'm upset that uh, our government is forcing us to use compact fluorescent lights, which are blue light at night, which is extremely harmful. There's a brilliant professor, Professor Abraham Hyam, who did research on uh, what he called light at night, the toxicities of light at night. And he claims that blue light at night is responsible for an increased incidence of cancer, macular degeneration, heart disease, on and on and on, because the blue light's horrible to uh, be exposed to at, at night. I have these glasses that I use during the day that are clear, but then at night they're like an orange that I use when yeah. I'm using uh, they're called blue blockers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't recommend blue blockers during the day because you need blue light. At night, mm -hmm. you can put on the blue blockers. Or I have an iPhone, and an iPhone has a night shift. So during the day, the phone is bluish, and at night, it turns to a red tinge. So mm -hmm. the engineers at iPhone are brilliant. And there's a lot of computer screens that have that now, too, that you can have a night shift on your computer. But is it, is it necessary to wear some kind of a protective glass when you're just using your computer during the day? No. Oh, okay. I don't think so. 
You want okay. the blue light. The computer generates some blue light. Okay, thank you. Okay, other. Okay, Dennis. Uh, you're I've, got, I've got this device. I don't know what it's called, but it uh, it's kind of like a vibrator. And, you know, you can put it up against your chest. And uh, one doctor, I showed it to one eye doctor, and he said that it might help putting it on the back of my neck in terms of increasing the blood flow. But he said, do not put it directly over the eyes. Do you have any opinion on the value I of... I tell you, you have, you have more gadgets, more ideas. <laughs> Anyway, like gonna, I said, I, if I if I had my radio show, I'd have you a guest on. <laughs> well, I look at it, everything and anything that's out there, and and you're certainly a, a pioneer in this field. And I just thank God, you know that that I first learned about you on KFNX Radio years and years ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that, that you know, in reducing the tension in your neck. Uh, another thing is people with glaucoma, they may need just to get a good body massage, you know, re relax the uh, tension in your neck and shoulders, because when you have tension, you're blocking the venous outflow and, you know, pressures are going to be built up. So definitely, I think uh, that could be beneficial. I also do the rebound trampoline. I've been doing that for years, and I, I noticed that you recommended that. Yeah, the rebounder helps improve the lymphatic flow, which can help. See, all these things, exercise is important because you want to get the circulation going. You know, when you have stagnation of the blood in the optic nerve, that's going to cause damage. So, well, studies have shown that, you know, aerobic exercise uh, will reduce the eye pressure. You go out and have a run or a walk, come back, your pressure is going to be lower, your eye pressure. So, you know, all these... And that's, that's the thing that upsets me. The, the eye doctors just don't talk about that. Just take your eye drops. There's so many things that can be done, not only for glaucoma, but for other eye, eye conditions too. So. There's a question here. Do you have any experience with using C60 for eye issues? I don't know what C60 is. I've never heard of that. Maybe if you could type uh, what C60 is. It sounds like an explosive. It's it's carbon 60. I didn't put the comment in, but it's carbon 60. Oh. Something Claudia talked about on, on Naturally Clear Vision. Yeah, it's, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, but I, I'm, always, I'm always interested. And, you know, that I think I learn more from my patients than I do when I go to medical meetings. Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what it's good for, but I do remember hearing about it from Claudia. I also mm. wanted to mention when you were talking about the palming, another thing I learned from Claudia, if you do it correctly, you're also hitting all the acupressure points around your eyes. Right. It's also good yeah. for it. And it's a type of meditation. You close your eyes, you're experiencing dark, deep breathing, positive information, slow breathing. And uh, I don't know if you heard of Mayer Schneider, um, he uh, cured his glaucoma with palming. And he has, he's written a couple of books and he has workshops. Uh, he's an amazing individual in California. Say his name again, please. Uh, Mayer Schneider. Um, he's written like a couple of books. Like M-E-Y-E-R, is that his first name? Mayer, he's an uh, Israeli. Okay. He lives in California, Mayer. And he wrote a book, I think, called Yoga for the Eyes that he's a big advocate of Bates. And in my book, I have a chapter on um, William Bates and all his uh, exercises. So you can use that as a reference, but there's a lot of material. And then there's a Tom Quackenbush, who I believe is in Holland now. He's written some comprehensive books and essays on Dr. Bates and vision therapy and there may be some interviews. I've interviewed him a couple of times on KFNX. Okay. Well, we're coming to the end here, uh, the hour.
And I want to thank all of you for uh, joining. This is recorded, so I'm going to be posting it. I'll send all of you a uh, recording of this. And then I do have these meetings, ask Dr. Kondrat a question every, um, every month. Um, so just check in your uh, email box and I'll let you know when they are. So thanks, everyone. And thank I enjoyed you. talking to all of you. Take Bless care. you. Thank you, Dr. Kondrat. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.